All right, you guys, we got some brand new functions on the board here. Well, we will in just a second. Um, example nine, let g of x be uh, three over, uh, that's number three, make that a little better for you, three over x minus two. Do you know what kind of function that is? Want to take a shot at it? What kind of function is g? If you said a rational function, you are correct. We dealt with rational functions in an earlier chapter. All right, and then uh, another function uh, is going to be h of x, and that'll be equal to the square root of x plus 4. What kind of function is h? You could either say it's a radical function, or you can be more specific and say it's a square root function, and you'd be correct. All right, very good. So these, again, these two functions, g and h, are given to you, all right? These are definitely given to you. All right, and what they're going to ask you to do is to find a function, all right? So this is, these are the instructions. Find uh, the function, find the composite function, and its domain, all right? So find the following composite function and its domain, all right? This is what they want you to find. They want you to find g composed with h. g composed with h at x. This one's going to be, I think it's going to be a really interesting um, example here. I think it's going to be some, it's going to be a lot of fun, okay? All right, here we go. By definition, g composed with h at x is equal to g of h of x. Cool? That's by definition. Now, here we go. This is equal to uh, g of, now, I'll replace h of x with the expression that defines it. So h of x is defined as the square root of x plus 4. All right. Cool. So this notation, again, means uh, that we need to plug x plus 4 into function g. Now, I'm going to highlight this for us. Function g uh, is over here, and the input variable is right there. So we want to replace that input variable x with this expression, the square root of x plus 4. All right, so let's see if I can show that to you clearly here. So uh, it'll be 3 over, now replacing x with the square root of x plus 4. And then don't forget, uh, you got a minus 2 down there. All right, cool. Um, hey, guys, we're done. <laughs> this is the function. I know it's not, maybe you would say that's not pretty. Well... You know, nobody ever guaranteed that it'd be pretty, but it is a function um, nevertheless. All right, cool. So um, what we want to consider now is what is the domain for this function? What is the domain for this function? All right, so there's a few things to consider. First of all, you see this, uh, you see this radical expression in the denominator right here, I'm going to highlight it, that radical expression in the denominator. We had a conversation about this uh, before, um, and that is uh, the square root of x plus 4 to avoid imaginary solutions, right? To avoid imaginary solutions, x plus 4, do you remember, has to be what? Greater than or equal to 0, right? To avoid imaginary solutions. We talked about that before. All right, so um, you know what might make it a little more clear here is if this white arrow um, were something like this. That way you can see like where is that coming from. All right, cool. So in order to avoid imaginary solutions, x plus 4, which is the radicand, uh, the expression underneath the radical, must be greater than or equal to 0. To zero. Now when you subtract 4 from both sides here, you get that x 
must be greater than or equal to negative 4. All right, so I want you to put that aside uh, for the time being. So I'll just kind of highlight that. Now, in addition to that, there is something else we have to consider as well. All right, there's something else that we have to consider as well. Um, let me see if I can uh, do a little bit of erasing here. Just give me a second here. I want to kind of erase this uh, arrow. All right, so in addition to that, we must also say that this entire denominator, the square root of x plus 4 minus 2, this entire denominator must not be what? Can you try to answer that question? The entire denominator, it, uh, for any fraction, the entire denominator must not be equal to what? To zero. Very good. Because if the denominator turns out to be zero, then the whole function's undefined, right? And so we want to figure out what makes this denominator become zero, all right? And whatever uh, real number makes the denominator zero, we have to exclude that number from the domain. All right, so let's do it. Let's do this work together. All right, so in order to figure uh, out what x value makes the denominator zero, we have to solve this um, statement here for zero. So, uh, for x, excuse me. So, what the first thing you're going to see me do is add two to both sides. So let's let's do that. Okay, this will give me the square root of x plus four must not be equal to positive 2, right? It must not be equal to positive 2. All right, move this up a little bit. Let's continue working. Um, what do you want to do at this point to solve for x? If you thought about square uh, squaring both sides, good job. So you're going to see me square both sides. So you're going to see me square this left-hand side here. You're going to see me square the right-hand side there. Squaring will undo the square root, right? They're kind of like uh, inverse operations or opposite operations, so that all you're left with on the left-hand side is just x plus 4 must not be equal to 2 squared, which is 4. Cool. Let's continue working, guys. Let's solve for x. We're about done. Subtract 4 from both sides. When we say solve for x, don't forget we mean isolate x, right? Get x by itself. So then x must not be equal to 4 minus 4, which is 0. All right? Let me uh, kind of uh, highlight this for us. So look at these restrictions on your x variable. Uh, the very first one that we found is x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. And the second restriction is x cannot be 0. Again, those two combined, x can uh, only be greater than or equal to negative 4, and it must not be 0. Now, to maybe help us um, figure out what the domain is, uh, would you allow me to draw a picture for you? Now, you don't have to draw a picture, but I just think uh, for the visual learners, um, it would be uh, helpful, hopefully. So when you look at uh, your x-axis here, right? So I'm going to say this is negative 4. I'm going to say this is 0 right here. Um, we're saying that x can be or must be greater than or equal to negative 4. So it's like I'm going to put a closed in circle here or a bracket. Uh, the closed in circle, that bold circle there means that uh, negative 4 is included. So you're going from negative 4 to the right, correct? But when you get to 0, you have to exclude zero. So like maybe put like an open circle at zero and then keep going, right, forever. So this is your domain. Any number greater than or equal to negative four, but you have to exclude zero. So let's see if we, you and I can write this in interval notation, all right? So I'm gonna move the screen up just a little bit. Um, there we go. <laughs> so your final answer, uh, as far as the domain is concerned, will be, let's read our graph, this uh, x-axis from left to right, a bracket at negative 4, bracket meaning negative 4 is included, it's equivalent to that closed in circle, uh, comma, you got to stop at 0, exclude it, which means um, put a parenthesis, which is equivalent to that open circle, union uh, from 0, 
to positive infinity to positive infinity all right so then this is your domain uh kind of like box that for us uh, this is the domain for that composite function that you and i found all right the domain okay any real number as long as it's greater than or equal to negative four and as long as it's not zero great job guys